Good day, everybody. Dave Walker here with the B to SMB Institute, and I am. I've been really looking forward to this segment uh, for Forward Twenty One, and uh, I'm here to welcome Stephanie Gorski, who's a managing director at Accenture. Stephanie, good day to you. It's so good to see you, Dave. I've been looking forward to this too. And we're gonna we're gonna we we've promised to each other that we we won't geek out too much on <laughs> a lot of the data and the insights that we're about to present. But it is truly cool. By way of background, do you want to just give the 411 on you and the, the practice that you kind of represent inside of Accenture and some of the businesses uh, that you've worked on and, and, and just give us the full spectrum? Yeah, absolutely. So hi, everyone. Uh, so as Dave mentioned, I'm a managing director in our strategy practice within Accenture. So I focus this type of work that we're about to share with you. I focus on supporting our clients with this type of work. Um, and the clients that I support are those software and platform driven type clients. So the um, ones that are really digitally native, which is gonna be some of what we talk about here today. And also ones that are really supporting small, medium sized businesses really holistically. Um, so I am very passionate about figuring out how we can support small, medium sized businesses even better. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why Dave and I have been spending quite a bit of time together is really leaning into this area, making sure that we're data-driven and how our perspective to support the uh, support small, medium-sized businesses during this time. So I'm really excited to share some of the research that we've done proactively uh, together. And you know, just by way of background, because I know that this will be uh, actually kind of familiar questions, at least uh, that uh, have been represented across our community um, at large, um, and they really get at the heart of the relationship that we as sellers have with they as buyers um, and really trying to understand how well aligned are we? Do we really, do we get each other? Um, and you're gonna see some, some actual data that really digs deep into the relationship that we have. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty compelling to say the least. So with that as a backdrop, I will turn it over to you, Stephanie, and let you just kind of drive from your PowerPoint presentation, really the first wave and, and emphasis on first wave, first wave yeah. highlights of the research that that uh, we've we've done together. Absolutely, let me bring it up. All right. So, um, Dave, like you mentioned, and actually, I want to highlight a little bit. This this was. Me and you talking really is where this this came from, and you highlighted some of this already. From so much of what over the last, I would say, four years, this has been a discussion that I've had with my clients around how do we support small, medium-sized businesses more holistically? How do we meet them where they are at, and how do we meet their needs? And when I've spent time interviewing and also talking to you, which has been phenomenal, I've seen a gap between what small and medium sized businesses need and how enterprises are really addressing them, but I've never had the data or the information backing it to really truly support it, other than those qualitative discussions that I've had with individual small and medium sized businesses. So when you and I, after the last time I presented it a couple months ago on like what is the state of small and medium sized businesses during this time. I really felt like this was something to dive into and that we could uncover and have fun researching together and you jumped right at it. So this is where this all came from. So to walk everyone through in January, so this is truly cutting edge data and information that we're about to present. It was just completed. These surveys were just completed about two to three weeks ago. So you're seeing, Dave mentioned first wave, you are seeing the first wave of insights, which is just even more amazing that this, all this boils up to the top for many times when I do a survey or analysis, sometimes you have to go multiple levels deep in order to find the insights that you're looking for. As soon as we started looking at the actual data, it was blatantly obvious what we found the differences between small and medium sized businesses and enterprises. So the goal of this, grounding back to the goal, the goal was to understand SMB preferences, business challenges, per perceptions of enterprise companies during this time, right now during COVID, as stated really from the voice of SMBs, and then at the same time, do a mere image survey on how enterprises are perceiving SMB preferences and business challenges during this time. And our hypothesis was that there would be a disconnect. The disconnect that we have seen was a bigger gap than we imagined. 
And this is why we really wanted to dive more and more into different layers of this. And so you'll see the first wave of high level insights, but we believe that there's a lot that we still have left to uncover. All right, giving some grounding, because I always think it's important to ground on what we mean by some of these definitions around small and medium sized business and enterprises during these surveys. So we interviewed 500 on either, I mean, we surveyed 500 on either side. When we looked at the industry breakdown, we wanted a good representation, not to over-engineer to eat specific industry. So we did put quotas around what industries we're getting information from, also some caps around company age and size. When we talk about company size, that's how we actually defined SMB versus enterprise. I know there's a lot of different discussions out there around what sizes actually justify enterprise and small, medium-sized businesses. These are ones we've used in the past so that we could correlate with other surveys we've done and see some differences, changes, evolutions. So I shared last time I was with you, Dave, some glimmers of hope, what we call the glimmers of hope survey around digital maturity and how SMBs are evolving during this time. We leverage the same company size. So we're actually able to correlate some of the information we're seeing now, and you'll see it on the next slide, and also what we we're seeing back in July. Most of these SMBs are from the 20 employees to the 500 employees. And then with company size, we're seeing 85% of them for enterprises have over 1,000 employees. I love the range of differences we have down on company size down here. So it really gives you the information we're about to share, give you the breadth and depth of the whole range of SMB and enterprise experience. And there's also, and I don't know if, if everyone can see it clearly, but there's also in the pie chart breakouts, there's also a really good representation of product offering um, yeah, so that we really have kind of a sense as to, okay, in manufacturing, what, you know, how many did we get? And is this representative of leisure and hospitality and business and financial services? Um, so I think it's a really, it, it really is on, on, I think, two dimensions, size of business and category of offering uh, a really, really good sample set. I love that you highlighted that. I couldn't agree more. The final piece I'll highlight, and I glossed over this originally, was I really um, also value the company age because it means they're not new at doing this. It's not new. We're not getting a lot of new companies. Um, we're still hearing that voice, but we're not getting a lot of new companies who are new at either buying from S um, selling to SMB or buying from enterprise. So the the understanding of really how this relationship works and how the dynamic or the engagement model works, it's pretty foundational and set with both of these companies. Um, now, when we say this, I wanna also ground us on, when we asked SMBs who we surveyed and made sure who we received information from, it was small, medium-sized businesses, but was more specifically those that were making decisions on their buying behavior. What were they actually buying? How were they buying? And who were they buying from? The SMBs that responded to those surveys, the people that responded, were ones that were a part of that decision-making um, process on products and who they engaged with. Was it an enterprise or an SMB that they engaged with? And they had to be buying from enterprise in order to respond to the survey, at least for a portion of their products. When we then looked at enterprise, the people that responded to this had to be selling directly to small, medium-sized businesses or had to be part of the sales motion that they had an engagement with small and medium-sized businesses. So if it's a bigger opportunity that they were selling, it could be two people that were selling it. They weren't the focus, but they had to be really close to SMBs in that process and how the engagement model looked. So we're truly getting the front line on both sides. Those are the people that we're hearing from as their voice in, the, in both of these surveys. All right. Anyone who's done research before knows how many thousands of respond of potential respondents we had to talk to to, <laughs> to get everybody through those two major those two major gates that exactly. we exactly yeah to get that to get the answers that people didn't have fallout you're spot on Dave so let's keep going forward I mentioned that we had done um, the glimmers of hope study that focused on digital maturity in July. And I think this is a really good grounding for us, just a little bit more detail on the small, medium-sized businesses that responded. And quite frankly, something that I'm personally very passionate about because it's an area that um, 
I'm hearing constantly from small, medium-sized businesses that help is needed is around digital maturity and the holistic business of digital maturity. Don't just support me on my product, support me on how to actually improve my positioning in the market or reach new customers. And a piece of that is how do I actually get to be more digitally savvy? So one of the pieces that I really strongly want to highlight that we saw was we broke it down into three personas in on our July analysis. And those numbers haven't changed. We've seen very small, two, 3% is a very small fluctuation. And that is basically showing us that the number of um, SMBs that were digitally mature, digitally savvy, emerging and stragglers is still the same. That bottom one third, I talk about this all the time, especially being from Accenture, there's so many companies that are helping enterprises like ourselves become more digitally uh, inclined during this time and really make sure their business is set up for success in this COVID times and pushing us to really think about helping SMBs more holistically around digital maturity is a critical capability. And right now, who's helping SMBs do that? And this number only shows further. We say all the time that we've seen more in the last year, we've seen about 10 years worth of digital transformation growth. That's one of our biggest statements at Accenture. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing it from this, from this material and these data points for SMBs. So I, the grounding on this, the support as we talk about enterprises and where they can lean in to support small, medium-sized businesses more, this is one area that really mattered to me as I looked at the numbers. Yeah, and I don't, I don't interpret it as really necessarily contradictory to the anecdotal evidence we were all talking about as far as small business digital transformation. I would argue that the increase, you know, the statistically significant increase in the emerging crowd is where you would expect to see people filling in their digital capabilities. You know, they had some, they needed a few more. Yeah. But what is kind of sad is, is that if really the straggler businesses really weren't able to, you know, adopt kind of the digital capabilities that they've lacked for so long in the, in, 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 for years, that's a shame because they're not getting the joke that this is this is not just simply a nice to have this is a must have you're spot on dave and it's not we're not going backwards we're only going forwards this is going to be needed no matter if covid how long covid continues to last um this is really the the wave of the future so um i completely agree with you on that so let's jump into the comparison and i mentioned the gap earlier so we are going to structure the rest of the discussion around these four areas. Um, and I am not normally a person that wants to read a slide line by line, but I think it's almost critical when it comes to this slide. So we started with the trust factor. Trust has been one of the biggest conversations that I've had during my time talking to enterprise clients and also SMBs. I think every interview I've had with a small, medium-sized business, trust has come up. And when we looked at trust, when we asked very, by the way, we asked these questions very bluntly. So we asked SMBs, do you trust the enterprises you work with? And I think this is so much even, even more powerful, these numbers, because it's who they work with. It's not only who did they not buy from, it's who they actually work with and how much they trust them. So 49% said they do not trust the enterprises they work with. Then we flipped it and asked enterprises at the same time, how much do you believe the SMBs think that they trust you based on who you work with. And they said 83% said that they believe the SMB they work with trust them. That gap is huge. It is, it is amazing. I thought it would be closer together. It is amazing how much the enterprises are confident in their relationship and their trust factor with SMBs, but the SMBs still think there's something that enterprises are hiding or not transparent about. There are so many different ways and Dave, we started talking about this, that enterprises can address that too going forward. And I think that's more of some of the weeds and the detail we want to get to. So moving to the next one, caring. I've heard so much, and one, this was a very powerful one for me. I've heard so much through my conversations that it's not about the product. It's about caring about my holistic business when I talk to small, medium-sized businesses. Really care about my business, care about my success, care about how I am going to evolve over the next year instead of just selling me a product. So 48% of SMBs think enterprises do not care about the holistic success of the business, whereas 85% of enterprises 
believe their company cares about the holistic business. Again, another huge disconnect on perception versus actual fact of how SMBs feel like they're being treated. Next one was around understanding. And when we came to understanding, it was about really knowing the core challenges. What are small, medium-sized businesses facing every day? What are they really thinking about? What's top of mind? What matters most? So 47% of SMBs think enterprises are not trying to understand their challenges. They're just fundamentally not listening. And this goes a little bit to what I've heard and spent time on focused in the past was around a lot of SMB support or products are just enterprise products recrafted and meant for SMBs slightly. This is about really knowing what the challenge of an SMB is and making sure the product and the goals and how you reach to them and support them is addressing the SMB holistically. Seven, then 72% of enterprises believe SMBs are a major focus for their company. I'm gonna dive into this a little bit but, um, later, but this really goes to the fact that it's devoted, it's focused, and it's really spending time understanding their core business needs. Now, just, the, to, I, just to linger on yeah. this slide for a moment, because when you first shared it with me, I was, I really was thunderstruck yeah. that the gap was this large and that it was across so many really critical attributes of a relationship. Um, and, and, you know, of course, the buyers to seller relationship is always going to be somewhat adversarial, but this really kind of gets at something that's different than conflict. It's really, you don't get me, you don't get me at all. And I don't trust you to get me. And, and you see the enterprise is kind of nodding their heads emphatically saying, yes, I do. I swear I do. Honest, I do. I <laughs> so, love how you just put that. So it's really it's unfortunately a, 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 a very, very uh, graphic snapshot of the relationship that B to SMB brands are having right now with SMBs. And then last point is I think it's, it's we, we will repeat this, I'm sure, but this is in the context of the last 10, 12 months yeah. where everyone that I talked to in the B to SMB brand space was making heroic efforts to try and serve small businesses and help them through the crisis and provide them with advice and discounts and grants and all sorts of TLC. And clearly it didn't really, it, it was a, as, as one of my friends at Verizon says, as it was a bridge to nowhere. It didn't get us, it didn't get anywhere in far as changing perceptions. So, wow, just an yeah. amazing slide. And I like that you just mentioned that Dave too, because it's one of those moments that I'm kicking myself that I, I really wish I had this analysis pre-COVID and post-COVID to see if it, any of the changes have made this perception gap actually get smaller. Because I have in my wildest dreams, if I had that beforehand, I, I, would, I can imagine that the perception gap was still even bigger. Um, it was more massive. Um, now, at least you're right. Small, medium-sized businesses are being talked about everywhere. Newspaper, articles, all those different pieces. So there's so much more though that still needs to be done and you hit it. I love that you summed it up with re relationship already. You know, that strong relationship, which is the last piece of a huge disconnect around 35% difference is around do not have a strong relationship and the enterprises believe they have a strong relationship of the ones they work with. And I almost wanna go back and do a, have a deep conversation of define strong and define what you're looking for but the piece, and I believe you and I had this conversation actually, it's all about making sure that these SMBs don't feel alone. And there's so many times after talking to small, medium-sized businesses that it's all just about the original sale when it comes to enterprise, uh, providing follow-on support, but not really keeping that relationship alive, that true partnership, that making sure that they're there for the not only original buy, but the continued support, discussion, understanding of their business, the caring about their business, all of this feeds together between trust, caring, understanding, and relationship so well that I was surprised at the gap, but I wasn't surprised that the numbers are so consistent across the board. If yep. you look at the 40, 48, 47, and 45, 45 they're they, they feel like they're at the right spot as you look across each of them too. So with that being said, now the next piece, 
is we asked SMBs, we, you know, we had fun with this. We wanted to really dive into the data and understand what SMBs thought too. So we asked SMBs, how, how do you think enterprises will actually answer? What do you think they'll say about how they perceive you? And even SMBs didn't think enterprises would say they were as confident as they are about understanding, caring, trusting, and building a relationship with SMBs. They did think that they would have a stronger feeling than what SMBs felt they would about themselves. However, they just didn't think they were gonna be this far off. So this also tells me, Dave, going back to your point, perception gap, huge gap in like what we're doing even as we're devoting a lot more effort into supporting small, medium-sized businesses. But also what it says is, do they think, do they, are they doing enough? Do our enterprise focused enough because they feel confident in what they're doing today to really continue to evolve this, to meet the SMB needs, to make sure that they're act, they're caring holistically, to make sure they're developing a strong relationship. I loved seeing what the SMBs said and it'd be interesting to hear. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to share this around since this is the first conversation we're having, but to get some real real time reactions from people based on these two slides. Yeah, and it's a great uh, moment to, to say, hey, you know, we really do want to make this a conversational Absolutely. presentation and really um, uh, figure out ways in which we can open up a forum around it so that people can uh, not only digest it, view the presentation, but also really kind of have some chat around it and see, you know, what, what, what do people believe? Um, again, remarkable that how perceptive small businesses are never underestimate small business. I think that's something I learned in building my B2 SMB brand at BizHive. Don't, they, they, don't fall prey to that, that overused phrase, small businesses are small for a reason. Right. Um, they're, they are smart, they're savvy, they're perceptive, and their EQ is off the charts. And if they don't feel these things that you are, you know, believe that you're doing with best intentions, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're doing if they don't really feel it. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. All right. As we, so the next array of materials is really going to dive into each four of these areas in a little bit of detail. Um, I will, we've kind of hinted at this. There's a ton of detail left behind each of these. So wave one, but we're just going to highlight some specifics. So if we dive into the first one around trust, why does this matter? I kept going to like, what's the so what around trust, which I think we all inherently know, but there's some real key, there's a real key point here. So we asked all the SMBs around their purchase behavior. I, I mentioned I had done a study a while, I, you're going to hear me mention a couple of times, I did a study about three years ago on some of purchasing and buying behaviors of small and medium sized businesses and what they were buying from enterprise. So I did leverage some of those insights too, because I want to compare across the number of years, which is the next level of insights we're going to derive. But we asked them, what are they purchasing from enterprise? So end user devices, connectivity services, IT services, office supplies, all going to the top of what percentage were they actually buying from enterprise companies. And that's not a surprise. None of those types of products surprised us in the engagement model around how enterprises and SMBs are spending time together in this sales motion. But what was interesting was we then looked at based on those, what they're buying from enterprise and how much that company said from the previous question, did they trust the enterprises they're working with or did they not? 55% of those that trusted the enterprises that they're working with or felt closer to trusting them versus 37% really purchased from enterprises. So the ones that distrust enterprise that thought like they were on the scale of, okay, I don't really feel strongly about the enterprise. I don't really trust who I'm working with, but less from enterprises. It was directly correlated, but less from enterprises than those that trusted. Those that trusted were buying more frequently, actually engaging with enterprises and continuing to purchase from them on a multitude of different levels. So that 18% difference is basically how much more are those companies that trust enterprises are buying from enterprises? Which really gives you a difference of if you put this trust factor into a direct bottom line, how does this impact my business as an enterprise? That trust factor is one of the core components of actually how SMBs are buying. Do you think that, that organizations can, you know, 
now, you know, work the spreadsheet and basically show, okay, based on our, you know, annual volume and X, X product or X service, that uh, if, if really I'm unfortunately on the distrust side of the spectrum, I've left these many dollars on the table. Wonderful. Or conversely, because I am a trusted resource, I am actually creating X dollars worth of market share advantage. I do. I think that that's actually math that anyone viewing this could do. Do you, do you believe that too? I completely agree with that. There's a lot of studies that have been done, this one being included now, that you can triangulate that information and you can look at your um, actually what you are selling in the revenue and figure out based on trust. I'm also talking um, and have spent time talking with a large number of co uh, companies on trust index. And how is that changing the, we talk about happiness indexes and different pieces with actual clients, um, how that's changing the engagement model with their, um, with their customers and what is that leading to in return on investment. And trust is the biggest conversation right now as a direct correlation with that bottom line revenue. And also one of the bigger discussions around, which we'll get to in a second, around retention and churn, because it's not just about what revenue you're gaining from that customer today, but how long are they going to be your customer? How long are they gonna engage with you? And that matters almost as just as much. So let's dive into the next attribute, which was caring. Yeah, absolutely. So I mentioned earlier that um, with the study that I'd done about three years ago, we did the same buying behavior, 60 to 70% of enterprise products services are reevaluated over the last 12 months. That's pretty normal. What we see, I mean, you, Dave, you mentioned this so well, SMBs are so savvy and so business focused. And also you'll see a lot of discussion around price and a, a impact of the product on their business. So there is a reevaluation process that almost SMBs go through every year. How, the big factors that they're reevaluated on those products are quality and price. We continue to see those come to the top. I saw it pre-COVID. I'm seeing it during COVID. That's a big focus. So what we asked when we asked about the caring, the caring parameters, and you saw earlier in the slide, we asked about, do you feel like these enterprise companies are focused on selling to you or really understanding your business needs? And what we then, you know, we've cut this data so many different ways, but one of the things that we did cut it across, and we talked about this at the beginning was, micro SMBs, small to medium, and larger SMBs. We started looking at what are the what are the beliefs around each of those? So micro SMBs felt like enterprises care, care more um, about their SMB needs. So 38% of them, but the opposite end of that is they care more about the SMB needs than selling. But if we look at the other end, the larger SMBs, 50-50 basically, said they care about selling versus my needs. So the micro SMBs felt more like they actually listened to the needs of the, them as an individual company. The enterprises get them a little bit more, but the larger were a little more, I'm not sure what they're doing. I'm kind of thinking enterprises are selling to me a little bit more. With that, then we saw the churn. So based directly correlated to how they felt if the, if the enterprise cared about selling to them versus actually truly their needs, we saw increase in churn. So for example, larger SMBs, because enterprises care more about selling and that's the feeling that they're getting, that's how they perceive it, they're more likely to leave or switch working with an enterprise. They may switch to another enterprise, they may switch to a non an SMB company and actually buying from them, but they are more likely to, after that 12 month period, actually change to another company. Whereas the micro SMBs, because they feel like enterprise companies understand their SMB needs a little bit more, they are less likely to switch. They actually stay with the same company. They feel like they are really being valued by that enterprise company. So the fact that this goes deeply correlated with FTEs and also really correlated with the care of selling versus actually the my needs um, was really inspiring to also just show hey, I mean, I talk about this all the time, but really spending time with that SMB, showing that you care about them, listening to them, really truly getting what they're looking for leads to a lot less churn in the long run. 
what's fascinating here is it really basically the headline is with size comes cynicism. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, you know, the larger the company, the more cynical they are about the, yeah. the relationship that they have with enterprises. And, and listen, I think that, that the, the churn insight is key because I don't, I think that churn is something that our community talks a lot about and, and frankly, uh, always says out loud, why don't small businesses trust us more? Why don't, why do they leave us? Why are they so unfaithful? Um, and, and, and honestly, I think this is it is it, if, if that small business feels that all you are is a revenue utility, um, that, that, that as a customer, that's all you are as a means of making money, then they're going to probably not have much loyalty to your brand or product. It's fascinating. And I think the piece, Dave, you hit on um, the piece of cynicism. I completely agree with that. And I saw that as well. The other piece is if you think about these small micro SMBs, they're making smaller number of decisions, right? Of who they engage with. There's a smaller number of enterprises they engage with too. They are getting to know an enterprise because they don't have this larger array of who they who they actually contract with or buy from. Um, they are getting to know individuals at a personal level and it's closer to the ground, right? There's If there's four people, you know that person you're buying from across the whole organization. Whereas as you get bigger, it's sometimes harder to create that caring connection um, and show that you understand the needs. So the other point that I would, I was really thinking as I was looking at this data was with larger SMBs, you got to take more effort to show you care. Right. Um, and you got to take more effort to continually show you care. It is not, um, sometimes we think it's the opposite end of like, because they're small and because they're new with they, or smaller, they're more needy. It's equal on these, both sides. They're needy in larger SMBs, but they're just different. It just right. looks different. So you have right. to show care and support in a different way. And you might have to listen in a different way. And the problem is that as we look across this conversation and the analysis, they're just not being treated differently. Right, right, exactly. Um, so there's really an aspect, and you'll hear this in a little bit, aspect around personalization that's not just in personalization product or what I need to actually get my business done, but personalization and engagement um, that's truly valuable here. Awesome. So we're going to keep going, Dave, unless you had something else. No, so not, not at all. About. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm like, and I even know where this is going. So I'm still, <laughs> I'm still on the edge of my seat. Awesome. So next piece we're around understand. Um, and, you know, we talked so much about the gap between the two of what enterprises are seeing and what SMB perception is. One of the things here, what we did ask is we asked, what are the challenges of SMBs during this time? And what are they facing for the next 12 months? One of the pieces that was actually really, really exciting to see too was that enterprises and SMBs were pretty aligned. What SMBs felt like their challenges were and what they were going to face over the next 12 months, what enterprise thought the challenges were, were really, really close together. There's some, and there's some differences, which I'm gonna highlight, but most, for the most part, they get it. They get what the challenges are. It's just not, going back to the last slide, making them feel like they get each other. Um, so when we, we gave everyone, both sides, the S, small, medium sized businesses and the enterprises a hundred points to distribute. So we could see like weighted average and different pieces of how important each of these factors were. They got it. Retaining customers, marketing to new customers and achieving growth goals were really equally as important on both sides. Enterprises knew this map, these matter to SMBs, the pieces that they still knew that talent, cost, and customer service levels mattered to small, medium-sized businesses over the next 12 months. They just didn't get how much is what it comes down to. So enterprises didn't see how much top of mind the cost structure actually is impacting the constant conversation around small, medium-sized businesses. And then the managing the talent. And I will tell you, the managing talent and workforce, something I continually hear in every discussion that I'm having, that that has become a bigger and bigger component to top of mind kind of conversations. And then customer service levels as being, how do we continue to manage support in our organization? All of those, there's a disconnect between how much emphasis enterprise put on those when thinking about small, medium-sized businesses. The piece around cost conscious, really valuable to highlight because it goes back to price and you're going to see it in a little bit too. But as I say, price and quality are two of the things that small, medium-sized businesses continue to evaluate products on. It is equally important in this cost-conscious managing cost structure aspect. 
this just continues to show how price sensitive and how focused small medium sized businesses are, which matters during this time because there's trade offs between everything that you do and everything you purchase from everyone you purchase from. So having that and knowing that's top of mind, um, very important. I will tell you, I'm running another analysis and research effort for one of my clients and that continues to come up to the top, even in that analysis for small and medium sized businesses. So mm -hmm. all of this is triangulated, stressing that important of cost, price, um, how to actually manage their budget, support them holi holistically, um, continues to be a really, really important factor. And, and I think one of my observations from this yeah. slide is is that um, the as we have talked about often in in our community, it's it's how do we help our small business customers drive sales, recapture revenue, recover what revenue they've lost, get customers back into their stores or doors or websites, and yeah. and again, small businesses may be smarter than we think they are. They're actually thinking beyond just pure revenue. They are thinking about, I got to worry about customer service. I'm a small business. That's what I'm relied upon to do. I've got to manage cost, my costs better. I've got talent that I've got to manage now in a completely different environment. This to me makes a lot of sense from the small business side. It's disappointing that the enterprises are not picking up on, no, this is as complicated and as full spectrum a business challenges a business challenge for these small businesses as it is for us as a large enterprise. They're going through exactly the same kinds of things. I completely agree. The multi-dimensional aspect of this is um, of the small business is evident that that's not valued enough. Mm -hmm. um, and the piece that you just that you just said really reminds me of the first slide that we went through around digital maturity and that of, is that evolving or not because. One of the pieces is small, medium sized businesses don't have the help that the large enterprises do to actually get there and do this holistic spectrum across all these pieces and really manage effectively juggling each of these. Um, and that's one of the, the we're going to go into relationship in a second, but that's that's a whole that's a holistic support relationship that they're looking for from these enterprise providers that, quite frankly, the product just selling a product isn't working anymore. Um, really supporting them in the end-to-end -end business and the success, which we heard about in the caring, and we heard about all those pieces. It's coming evident here too, as well. So, last of the four attributes that we wanted to dive deep on. Yeah. So we're going to go into relationship in a second. I have one more piece to hit on. So, Dave, you're. I love the excitement, um, and we're almost there. The piece I do want to hit on a little bit. One other piece of understanding was about meeting small, medium-sized businesses where they are. We actually have talked a lot about during this time. Um, and over the last 12 months, how enterprises uh, aren't necessarily engaging in the SMB with the SMBs in the way they need to. A lot of what we see on this slide is actually enterprises still consistently treating SMBs about where they want to be met. So enterprises are treating SMBs like, for example, they're for discovery, they're trying to reach out to them through search engines. That's where enterprises want to actually be engaged with, not SMBs. SMBs valued that lower on the end of like engagement model and how to work. They valued company websites, they valued digital ads, which was more than what enterprises are focused on for digital ads. They valued the in-person sales rep, they valued word of mouth. Word of mouth has consistently been one of the biggest discovery pieces. Um, I, the study from three years ago, that was the same thing. It was one of the top choices for small and medium sized businesses. It's not going away. That word of mouth is a big discovery, big conversation channel for SMBs as they're working with enterprise clients. The other piece is around professional events, peer-to-peer -peer channels, really making that more evident and more um, engaging with SMBs in those ways versus what enterprise find easy. This feels a little bit like enterprises are doing what's most comfortable versus what the SMBs truly need. And that was something that we've seen for years. This has not changed during the time of COVID. So the engagement model really does matter. Now on the right-hand side, we looked at the channels of by digital maturity and what I shared with you earlier around the savvy, the emerging, the stragglers. And the savvy, this was, this was fun to see. Savvy is still looking for professional events. Even though they're really digitally mature and their business is digitally mature, 
they are still looking for that peer to peer engagement of, in, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be in person. It could be Dave, like you and I are doing right now, mm -hmm. um, a one on one session. They're looking for those type of engagement models, not just the um, aspect of company website or digital ads. Merging and stragglers are looking for the same. They're looking for peer to peer channels, more word of mouth, more actual physical store and engagement models too. This is a, you know, frankly, a, a, a marketer's roadmap. Yes, for, exactly. For serving SMBs. I mean, do uh, clearly, um, if you want to meet them where they are, which should be the mantra of all marketers, um, meet your customer where they are, then this, this indicates you're not where they are. <laughs> Um, absolutely. And, and you need to be. Yeah. So, absolutely. Sorry, I stepped on this slide. No, let's go on to the let's uh, go to the relationship slide because I think this one is probably one of the most fascinating of all. Yeah, it's one of my favorites too. So when we looked across, um, one of the things I told you we asked a ton of blunt questions um, to really get. So we're not um, my least favorite thing with uh, surveys and interviews and discussions is trying to weave through what they said to to make some kind of um, output out of it. I wanted to ask the blunt, hard hitting questions to really get an honest answer from people. So one of the honest answer questions we asked is blunt, blatantly obvious actions enterprises companies can take to win more SMB business. What do actually enterprise companies need to do to really work with you better, really gain more of your business bottom line? And it came up to be five things that um, Dave, I'm not surprised by. There are things that I constantly am hearing across discussions that I've had with small and medium-sized businesses of all sizes, quite frankly. The first one is price. I mean, we've heard this throughout the discussion. Price keeps coming up, cost, how we're geared to that. The This did show up for enterprises as part of their response. We asked enterprises the same thing, by the way. What do they think they need to do to win more business from SMBs? They did mention price, but they just didn't weight it at the extreme that um, SMB respondents did. And it just shows, based on the other ones, it continues to show the further disconnect between how important and how valuable that is in the discussion and having an honest conversation around that too. The next piece was around supported. Better customer service, better engagement. This is really around also the relationship model. We're talking about relationship, but the relationship model between the SMB and the enterprise. SMB still weighted this higher than enterprise um, responses. There was general alignment, but really just still underestimate. The personalization, we, I'm actually really happy to see enterprises responded higher to this than SMBs, showing that they can be more personalized. This is something that we've been drilling over the last I would say year about really focusing on you hear it a lot in the news and you hear it a lot in discussions that I've had with enterprise clients. They know they need to be more personalized. They know they need to tailor more towards SMB needs. Um, I just implementation has to be shown though that that's going to be an area that they that needs to be focused on. And seeing the alignment there was great. Trusted, better understanding of my business, knowing my needs, continuing to be trusted, and then finally last piece, ease of use, simplified products. I. I hear this all the time. We haven't, we didn't touch on it a ton in here, but I will tell you it's, it'll be in wave two around truly simplifying the products to make sure it, it, it's easy. It's easy to work with. It meets my needs, but it's also not overly complicated or complex. The final piece, then when we look to the right-hand side of this is around, I mentioned earlier, how many actual enterprise companies have a remit, have a focus, on having a centralized team to support SMBs holistically. So that team, and you know, as we were talking about this, and Dave, as I've been talking to you, and the rest of the Accenture team, it's about end-to-end -end supporting the success of an SMB, really making sure there's engagement model. Most of these enterprise companies don't just have one product, they have multiple products. Who's thinking about all those products and how they connect and how they support the SMB more holistically? And only 41% of the enterprise companies actually have a centralized team focused on SMBs. And from my perspective and um, how I've worked with enterprise clients, this is a really big focus for me and a really big focus as I engage with enterprise, making sure that there's, one, there's a voice of SMB within the organization, but also a connected voice. 
However, they decide to set that up in the operating model. Really one, one area that sees the end-to-end -end success of an SMB makes a huge difference on everything we've been talking about um, to feel like one engagement model. It's so critical. And, and, that, and that, that centralized team should not be the redheaded stepchildren. Yes. Of the larger enterprise sales team or enterprise business unit. I think, um, did, did it strike you as, as at least interesting um, that the, there was a, a pretty, probably the most pronounced gap between the small business perception and the enterprise perception um, around the, how they each felt about their relationship with each other. Um, and this, what this demonstrates at least, other than maybe price, um, there is a lot of alignment between, well, what, well, then what goes into a good relationship? Yeah. I mean, in, 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 in describing the relationship on, you know, one side says it's, it's great and the other side says it sucks. And this is like, like, but we both know what we need to work on. We both know what would make it successful. That to me is encouraging. Do, are you encouraged by it as well? I am. I love, I am very happy you said that. Um, it is encouraging other than price, which I, I agree, let's remove. But I think there is a overall awareness of these other four factors completely. Um, and it is encouraging. Um, it's also a feeling that, it, you know, there's an aw awareness is the first step. However, what you do about that and how you make it resonate, this kind of goes back to what we were saying before, how you make that actually become true, that you as a enterprise are launching a, a communication or engaging with an SMB in a different way, really making sure that resonates and that validates. The piece we don't have in here that I, I wish we dove into more was around that feedback loop. Our, our enterprise is getting your feedback as SMBs frequently enough. Mm -hmm. What would you want that to look like? Because so many times I see my myself, Accenture and other enterprise clients, customers really um, launching stuff, but never hearing from the small, medium-sized businesses if it's truly working or if that has made a difference on trust, caring, or our relationship. And so I think it's, it goes hand in hand with, they know both sides know what really is needed to build that stronger relationship, but they also, I would love to spend more time on is, do they know the cadence of testing that learning and iterating on it together and figuring out the feedback to really make it impactful instead of just let's try something and hope it works, which right. is a little bit of the model that I'm seeing happen. There's a there's a few of our members who I know have, have actually articulated what they call the second moment of truth. So the first moment of truth is when they actually are conducting this that transaction, the yeah. small businesses bought something from them. But the second moment of truth is when they take it out of the box and they start using it. Absolutely. They put the icon on their desktop. They actually run their first payroll through the software system or they, you know, whatever it is that that first use is sometimes the is sometimes more difficult and but more critical than the actual sale itself. And, and that, I think that's pr certainly true in a lot of these, frankly, low cost, um, high volume, but low cost products and services that are out there to SMBs where it's twenty nine ninety nine a month. OK, fine, I'll give it a try and I can cancel any time. I'll give it a try. Well, that's meaningless if that company can't turn that prescription into a long-term relationship. Um, so I think it's really interesting. Last quick story over on the affordable and price. And we really, I mean, that in, in subsequent waves, we really need to dig in on that because that's obviously the most pronounced gap. Yeah. But I wonder if, um, and, and just use this story anecdotally, not as representative, but as an anecdote, a very large membership club, retail membership club, was in discussion with them about a year ago and they revealed their churn rate of small business membership. And it was astounding. It was the kind of churn rate that would take your breath away. And you'd kind of wonder why are you, why are you coming to work in the morning if you have that kind of a churn rate? And what they said was that they, what they, the only thing they could think to do was to do a better job of communicating communicating the total savings that membership had um, brought to the small business um, throughout the year, but most importantly, at the point of renewal, as in you spent $250 on a membership, but you saved over $750. So right there, you came out $500 ahead. 
And I said, that's a great idea. How long have you been doing that? And they said, well, we've really never done that before. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, you've just, you've just basically shot yourself in the foot right. in declaring value, not price. You've, you've basically, you know, not really conveyed the value of that $250 investment. So I wonder if, long way of saying, I wonder if the affordable and the, and the price is really more a disconnect driven by mistrust that what you're telling me is, is that these dollars that I spend on your product or service are actually going to bring me tangible value that I can equate directly to the dollars I don't get to take home or pay my employees or buy flour for my bakery. Yeah. I mean, we can triangulate. I, I, where you're going matters so much. It's the value. It, we're hearing return on investment so much, but it's mm -hmm. not just return on investment. Like I saved you this amount of money. It's also return on investment. If we go back, right. And we go back to the slides that say, I care about obtaining new customers and marketing to new customers. I care about spending more time on what I sent, like what I care about most, which is my core business all of those different pieces, if we then can align that value of that subscription to each of the layers that matter to that small, medium-sized business in a personalized way, that's really what you need there. You're not only showing how much you've saved, but you're showing what have I given you in return. I've given you access to more customers. I've given you a growth model or you know, a growth trajectory that's X depending on the product, there's a lot of opportunity to say just the difference is just based on cost, but true overall value. And another piece of that we talk quite frequently about is speed to value. How much did you help that SMB realize something faster than they could have realized through another vendor or on their own? Because that's the trade-off. It's not just with another vendor, but do they really need it? Um, or is there something else they could be doing that's different? So um, a lot of different pieces that could be included in that personalized story uh, that really helped the SMB make a more holistic decision. I remember a chat room comment uh, in QuickBooks uh, from, a, from a user and someone asked him, how long does it take you to produce your first monthly statement? And the answer was a month. <laughs> <laughs> and it, took, it takes a long time to do that first exactly. setup. Exactly. <laughs> so helping throughout that process. So it's not the focus because... That SMB, that's not their focus and the centralized thing that they're doing or selling is exactly. extremely important. Exactly. So um, just in summary, Dave, and I you know, want to just hit these, really, we've talked so much about trust, caring, understanding, relationship. That's the core areas that we're seeing the gap across small, medium-sized businesses. Trust being one that I personally have leaned on it. One of the reasons why it's first is because it is such a foundational building block to so those three other pieces, but really a 18% um, more, more companies buy, SMBs buy from enterprise at a level of 18% more um, if they trust them. So there's some real return on investment if you spend some time focused on this trust factor. Enterprises understand most of what SMBs need, and this is where you're talking about like there's some really good moments here of giving us hope. And we talked about the last study of glimmers of hope for SMBs. There's still glimmers of hope in this relationship too, that we're seeing of really understanding and aligned on what the next steps are. But this, the focus on execute is the real, um, the real next thing that I'm excited to see how, what we do with this information and how we, lean, how we um, help enterprises lean in more. Enterprises can engage with SMBs on more preferred channels. You said it, meet SMBs where they're at, where they want to be. And then finally, there's, we just talked about it, affordability, personalized, simple products really matter quite a bit. Um, I know you said this is wave one, but there's so much more data behind this that we can absolutely dive into that uh, I'm excited to uncover more. Especially and, and, we, and we genuinely want, um, viewer and user and audience feedback on this absolutely um, and, and suggestion as to you know where do we go next um because i think it's it's important i mean some of the things we've spoken about are that all right is, are there real differences between different category offerings in other words are financial products and services under uh, do they have greater trust than technology and and telecom services products Absolutely. You know, where, where are the differences between, between the categories? And then ultimately, I think, you know, smart brands are going to say, I want to know, I want to see this analysis for me. 
Yeah. I want to know, you know, I, I get the world. Am I, where are my deficits? And I think what's fascinating about it is, as designed at least, is that this framework at least could reveal to an organization, here are the areas where you are deficit and here are the areas where you have surplus and frankly can leverage to the positive um, and really create the kind of mythical roadmap that I was always looking for in leadership positions, which is tell me what I do, what, I, what do I need to work on? I kind of have a fingertip feel for where my business is at, but I'm not sure I really understand the precise moves of each individual dial that I have control of in my business, how I can make my business better. I think this reveals, hey, we've got a lot of work to do as a collective on our dials <laughs> yeah. with small businesses, clearly. Um, right. But I'm sure individual organizations would ultimately want to know, well, what, how, how does this relate to my panel of dials? What do I really need to work on? I completely agree. And what this is, I mean, overall, this piece has really told me, and as I spend more time with it, um, looking into more of the details too, at the next level of, of analysis, it's really telling me that the disconnect between SMBs and enterprise, the perception gap matters. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just about, I mean, so many times we have discussions that are, you know, I'm doing this. You go, you go back to it of like, it's not working, but they actually don't know it's not working. Mm -hmm. This shows that it's not working. Right. Um, there's still much, so much more to do. And even if you are doing something, cause I hear that all the time. And I even, you know, we've even said it of saying, okay, well I'm doing this and it's happening. Yeah. But if it's not making the SMBs feel like you trust you more or that they're building a deeper relationship, then there's no need to do it. It's time to iterate. It's time to change. It's time to do something different. So the perception versus reality and what's absolutely happening really does matter as we're thinking about so thinking about creating a better relationship, trust and caring, understanding between these two two important parties that, um, quite frankly, I would love to see having a stronger dynamic. And we can we can easily be on that path if we focus on these areas. I can't thank you enough. Uh, I, I I thank Accenture be, for becoming so quickly such an incredibly valuable member of our, of our B2S and BI community. And thank you, you're a rock star. I, I am just um, so in awe of, of what you've managed to pull off on such a tight timetable with such deep perceptions. It's so appreciated. Um, do you mind if people reach out to you directly and, and say, hey, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about the research and analysis that you've done? I would really enjoy that actually. Okay. Um, I, this is an area of, I hope everyone's seeing really deep passion of mine um, and an area that quite frankly, that we can make a lot of change in, which is super exciting. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to engage and support and talk to whoever really um, wants to have a conversation about it. Well, we've, we, we have a LinkedIn uh, profile link um, for you with the presentation, Wonderful. but we'll also provide your email address. And so, if, uh, so if people want to reach out directly, of course, they can reach out to me anytime. Happy to talk to anyone. Um, again, thank you so much for doing this. It was really, really um, important and I think telling and will lead to many, many great engagements and conversations as we go through, forward through 2021. Thank you. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure, Dave.